So let's look at the objectives of the safety life cycle. So the point is that what we want to do is build safer systems that don't experience some of the problems of the past. In other words, the problems generated by some of the prescriptive standards. So we want, we want to do this balancing again of making sure that we have the right, uh, the right design to give us the right amount of risk reduction that we need. If we do that right, then we'll have a more cost-effective design. We also want to be able to eliminate weak link designs, such as that class 3 example from v VDE or Oto one and provide us with a framework, a global framework, that we can apply across the board. So whether you've got a plant in the US, a plant in Europe, or a plant in Asia, they should all be able to be kept to the same standard. And the other thing is to set up a proper feedback and control system for safety. This is the functional safety management. So again, if you're going to do functional safety audits, you need to make sure that they're treated the same way you would treat any audit. If there's a non-compliance, you need to address that non-compliance and you need to address it in a timely fashion. This is very important. So if we look at the life cycle of 1508, you'll see there's an analysis phase, there's a design and implementation phase, and there's an operation and maintenance phase. So these three phases are consistent across the, the life cycles that we've talked about. Alarm, safety, cybersecurity. We always have to do an analysis to figure out what it is that we need to do and then to implement a design that will meet the requirements in a cost-effective manner and then to maintain it and operate it. I always used to say to people, remember the old 20-20-20 adage. If you're old enough to remember, this used to get banded around quite a bit, which was 20 weeks in design 20 months in implementation, 20 years in operation. So when it comes to looking at the 1511 life cycle, you can see again there's the analysis phase, there's the design and implementation, and then there's operations. And if you look, there's one box there that says Clause 16, Operations and Maintenance. That is where we are going to be spending 95% of our time through the lifetime of the CIS, we will be in that area, operation and maintenance. So we can do all the analysis phase correctly, we can do the right design, and we can install it, commission it, validate it, it's great, ready to go day one, but if we don't maintain it, and we don't follow through on the mechanical integrity, and doing the proof testing, then very quickly our system and our SIFs will deteriorate. And you'll notice that down the left hand side over here we have functional safety management and planning. So this is what I call the glue that holds it all together. Because if we're not planning on how we're going to manage functional safety throughout the life cycle, it's going to fall apart pretty quickly. So it's very important that we have that in place. And that's why I said the 1511 standard that was modified in, in 2016 puts more emphasis on that now. Now people say to me, well, that's all well and good that 1511 is written by a bunch of academics. No, it's not. It's actually written by end users for end users. And one of the things is that the committee noticed, the end users themselves noticed that people were not following functional safety management properly. So this is why there's more emphasis in the standard on this.